greetings, dear brothers and sisters. Let us begin with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Merciful God, anoint us with your Holy Spirit, that as we listen to your word, we may hear your voice speaking to us from within. Give us the wisdom to understand your message. Let your word be the joy of our hearts and the light to our feet. Give us the strength to build our lives upon your word. Let it be done to us according to your word. May we rejoice in the blessedness of hearing your word and keeping it. Speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. Amen. What is it that defiles? A soap manufacturer and a priest were walking together down a street in a large city. The soap manufacturer casually said, Father, the gospel you preach hasn't done much good, has it? Just observe, there is still such a lot of wickedness and corruption in the world and too many corrupt people too. The priest gave no reply until they passed a dirty little child making mud pies near a cutter. Seizing the opportunity, the priest said, I see that soap hasn't done much good in the world either, for there is still much dirt and many dirty people around. The soap manufacturer instantly replied, Oh well, father, soap is only useful when it is applied. And the priest calmly responded, Exactly. So it is with the gospel. Those who refuse to apply the cleansing power of the gospel remain corrupt and stained by the powers of darkness and sin. Yes, friends, one of the key issues that every society faces is that of corruption. In today's gospel, Jesus strongly opposes the corrupt and oftentimes inhuman and oppressive authority of the leaders of his time, the scribes and the Pharisees. Jesus begins by calling the people's attention to what he has to say in Mark chapter 7 verse 14. The background to this action of Jesus is the context of the unfair remarks of the Pharisees and scribes about Jesus and his disciples in the verses preceding today's gospel passage, that is, Mark chapter 7, verses 1 to 14. The scribes and the Pharisees object that Jesus and his disciples failed to keep up the tradition of the elders to have the ritual washing before eating. They placed greater importance to external cleanliness and hygiene over internal purity of heart and transparency within. But Jesus is in prime opposition to all such deceitful and corrupt human practices. He boldly questions the scribes and the Pharisees for their misplaced priorities and misleading interpretation of purity. And so Jesus summons the crowd and explains what is the meaning of real cleanliness and purity. There is an important lesson to learn here even for our lives. Jesus says in verse 16, Nothing that enters one from the outside can defile the person, but the things that come out from within are what defile. Thus, 
placing things in the right perspective. What is Jesus trying to teach us here? Why it is important to keep our hands clean with regards to external hygiene, it is equally or rather much more important to keep our hearts clean. Today, we insist on carefully washing and sanitizing our hands several times a day to ward off external virus away. But what about the virus of sin that is flooding our hearts, our lives and our families? Jesus is inviting us today to focus on an inner cleanliness. Let us therefore make a self-introspection. I may be appearing to be clean on the outside, but is my heart pure and holy? I may be appearing to be an angel to the world, but, but the intentions of my actions, are they truly honourable in the sight of God? I may be appearing to be very good and holy to those around me, but inside am I filled with anger, jealousy, malice, and greed? Externally, I may be appearing to be very successful, but am I decaying in the interiors of my soul with unchastity and deceit? Is it not time to cleanse our hearts and lives, which is perhaps defiled with sin? Yes, let us join our Lord today in opposing every bit of corruption and malice from our hearts and families and become truly pure and holy. Because the word of God in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 tells us, Strive to be holy, because without holiness no one can enter the kingdom of God. So let us see, how can we ensure that our hearts and lives are kept clean and pure and holy so that we can enter that awesome presence of our God. First, daily prayer, asking for that grace each day that we may live it in holiness. Second, daily sincere introspection, recognizing our own limitations and looking at practical ways to improve them. Third, what you fill your heart with is what will come out through your life. Fill your heart with the word of God. Pray with scriptures daily to help you live in pure holiness and purity. For example, Psalm 19 verse 14, that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my God. Fourth, read and learn from the life of saints. Holiness is a struggle for all of us, but its reward is eternal life in heaven. Surely, that makes the struggle worth it. Their lives are not so different from us. There is much we can learn from the life of saints. Five. When we try to be pure in the little things of life, we will be ready to stand the test and keep ourselves holy in difficult and trying circumstances, even in things like washing dishes or sweeping the floor. What are my thoughts? Am I doing it with a good and clean heart? 6. One of the most important things to remember if we want to remain pure and holy, is to frequent the sacrament of confession. That is the soap that cleanses our soul. 7. If you are struggling in any area of purity, ask the Holy Spirit to guide you to cleanse your hearts and your thoughts. Let us ask our Blessed Mother for powerful intercession 
to keep us holy as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Stay blessed.